Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for part two of this video. Now, this video here is gonna actually teach you how to apply lawn products to kill sod webworms, but you could use this to apply for any type of insect control you're doing in your lawn. Now, if you missed part one, in part one of this video, it's about 15 minutes long, 16 minutes long, I went through and I explained to you what sod webworms are, how to identify them, what the life cycle was, all of that, and then also went through treatment options for you, including looking at active ingredients and understanding what you're gonna use and what you're gonna apply to take care of the problem. Now in this video, I'm actually gonna take three of those products, a granular, a liquid applied through a hose end sprayer, and a liquid applied through a pump sprayer, and show you how to put them down. Now before we go getting too crazy, the target here is sod webworm. And one of the things people are gonna ask is how often should I apply? Now most of the products that you're gonna see me use here, they have a residual of a few weeks, so you really should only have to apply one time. But if you wanna reapply the product because there is a life cycle involved here with sod webworm, you could reapply two to three weeks later, but make sure you read the label on the product that you choose because you may not need to. Okay, so I'm gonna do three different types of treatments just to show you guys how to execute on all of them. I'm gonna do a granular, I'm gonna do a hose-in, and I'm gonna do a pump spray or liquid. And uh, each one will be a little bit different. This section here, this is my zoysia. It's not looking so great, but uh, I got some stuff to do to it right now. I just let it get a little overgrown and I gave it a little harder cut than it deserved. But uh, this here, this section here, section four, and it's 2,500 square feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and treat this with a granular treatment here to show you how that's done. Now I know people don't like reading labels, but you need to because we have different ways we could use this product. For example, if you're doing a home perimeter treatment, it's gonna have a little bit of a different application method and amount than if you're doing pests in the lawn. So we go down here and again, we found sod webworm, but even here, how much to apply? Apply one to three pounds per thousand for ants, fleas, and ticks but apply two to three pounds per thousand for all other listed pests. So we're doing sod webworm. It's not an ant, a flea, or a tick. So I like to go heavy, so we're gonna go max rate of three pounds per thousand. So you can see here on the bag, we can look at our Graduaciones del Esparcadores and uh, the uh, Scott's Deluxe Edge Guard setting there for the three pounds per thousand is a setting of 4.5. All right, this is a pie shaped section. I don't necessarily have to worry about trim passes here. I'm just gonna throw as close to the line as I can. The reason I don't have to worry about trim passes is because this won't change the color of the lawn. So nothing to worry about there. I just need to get a good even pass back. So I'm gonna head up this way first and I'm gonna throw right to the edge, the domination line over there. On my way back, I'm gonna watch this side and I'm gonna be throwing right to the middle of the wheel tracks from the previous pass. And I'm gonna do that every single time. I'm gonna throw back to the wheel tracks of the previous pass. Walking speed is three and a half miles per hour, which is a double fast walker. You guys know, putting some wood into it. This product does need to be watered in. It says water thoroughly, which I'm gonna go ahead and assume is at least one half inch of irrigation or rainfall. Now there is a case where some of you may want to apply using a hose and sprayer. You're just used to using the ortho dial and spray. And I encourage you again, I know I keep mentioning this, but go back and review video one in this little mini series here, because I'll talk to you a lot about using a hose and sprayer and what products you can and can't use via a hose and sprayer. But I will tell you, this came out to be the most expensive of all the applications, and that's one of the things you may wanna consider is the cost of the application when you're choosing what to use. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the orthodial and spray treatment. I got a brand new one I'm gonna use here, and I'm actually gonna put this quick connect on it. I'd like to thank Jay Choi, who sent me these. 
really saves my life having to screw these in and out of hoses all the time. He sent me a set of quick connects that I'm now using on my orthos. I'll show you that when we get over to the business end. Okay, now we need to read on the label and understand how much we need. And so we're gonna go here. This, this can be a little complicated, and I'm gonna tell you that this should not be done on large areas. I'm only gonna do section one here with this, and you'll see why in a minute, which is 1,000 square feet. So it says right here, four fluid ounces of seven, per gallon of water covers 250 square feet. But what matters here to us is that four fluid ounces of concentrate gets evenly spread across 250 square feet. I have a thousand square feet, so that's four times that, right? Because 250 goes into 1,000 four times. So if four ounces per every 250, and I got four of those sections, that means I need 16 ounces of concentrate to cover just 1,000 square feet. Now keep in mind, this entire bottle is 32 ounces. So if it takes 16 ounces to cover only 1,000 square feet, that means an entire bottle is only gonna cover 2,000 square feet. I know this math can get complicated, but I want you to understand where every dollar that you spend is going. Knowing the math here will help you know the math when you're making other applications to understand if it is actually the smartest product for you to be using, or if there's something that's more economical that might fit better in your budget. And that's a consideration I don't know if I've mentioned yet, is some of this might bear down to cost. I have an 8,500 square foot lawn, so that means I would need more than four full bottles of this concentrate if I was gonna do my entire lawn with this product, and that would get really expensive. But again, I just wanted to show you this option in case this is something that you're only comfortable with a hose and sprayer, that's the best option for you, then please just go ahead and go with it. So I need 16 ounces to go in here. And it does say on here, to not add water. We do that with Next products and fertilizers, but those are completely different. Remember, this is an IDE. This is an insecticide. You gotta follow the letter of the law on the label with insecticides. And it says, just put the concentrate in straight and do not add any water. So we're gonna put 16 ounces in. So this is a 32 ounce tank. So we'll put it in halfway and we'll be full. Some of you are gonna ask about the JP mods. I'll show you how to do the JP mods on this in an upcoming video. For now, we're gonna use it uncircumcised. I don't know if you can see, but I'm right there on the 16 ounce mark. It's not half full visually because this is a graduated tank here. So you wanna follow the sight lines on the side. The first thing to know is that this from the factory is gonna put out two gallons per minute, okay? Now it might be a little bit off from that, but just know two gallons a minute, that's the standard that comes out of there. When you set your dial on the side, this is telling you how much concentrate is gonna come out of this tank for every gallon. So you can see I have it set here on four. That means that four ounces of concentrate is gonna come out of this tank and be mixed in real time and put out the end with every gallon of water. If I have two gallons a minute, that then means that eight ounces per minute is gonna come out of the end of here. I have 16 ounces in here, which means I have two minutes to cover my 1,000 square foot area. I know that might seem difficult, but trust me, once you get it, you're fine, okay? So I have two minutes now to cover this area. When we go to do the next products and uh, soil amendments and things like that, I'll show you an easier foolproof way to do it. But with this, we have to be a little bit more precision. So I have two minutes now to cover this area, which two minutes is plenty of time to cover 1,000 square feet comfortably. And I'm gonna put it on the bird mouth setting, which is gonna give me the better coverage, the best coverage. Some of you might ask, how do you know it's actually coming out? Well, one is you can kind of hear it. The second is you can smell it. And uh, if you want to know what it smells like, it smells like now, those of you who weren't alive in the 80s, before things were safe, you won't get this, but there used to be a way when you would buy plastic action figures like He-Man, you would take them out of the package, they had this really strong plastic smell. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it except it smells like this. Toys don't have that smell anymore because it's all non-CFC and all that, but. If you know what old He-Man used to smell like, or Stretch Armstrong, or one of those old toys, 
That's what this stuff smells like. So that's how you know it's coming out as you smell it. Now this final application that I'm doing here, I'm doing it in my backyard and this is concentrate mixed in a pump sprayer. And I'm choosing this for the backyard because I actually have a lake behind me or a pond, it's a drainage pond. And I don't wanna get anywhere near the pond. In fact, I wanna stay 30 feet away from where the embankment begins to work its way down to the ponds. So as you know, around most bodies of water, ponds, lakes, that kind of thing, there's always a bank that goes and then there's a portion where you can see it start to slope towards the water. You wanna stay 30 feet off that beginning point. And the application that's easiest to control in this case is the pump sprayer, as well as it goes down with the lowest volume of water, and then you water it in afterwards with a quarter inch. The reason I know I needed to water it in, once again, is because I read the label. All right, now you're gonna see here with the concentrate that the use rates are much less. And in fact, what we need here is one quarter ounce per 1,000 square feet. The reason I'm going with the high rate is because right here it says, use the higher applications rate if the grass is greater than one inch high. So we are definitely over one inch, we're at four inches. So that means I'm gonna use the top rate. The other thing here is the dilution rate. It doesn't really matter. It says you can actually apply this at 10 gallons per thousand as a dilution rate or as low as two gallons. And in fact, if you do it less than that, which we are going to, you want to immediately irrigate with one quarter inch of water after you apply. Now, if dilution rates confuse you, don't worry. Just listen to what I'm gonna tell you right now. If you have a 7.9% concentrated bifenthrin, you're gonna mix one quarter ounce of the concentrate in one gallon of water, and that one gallon will cover 1,000 square feet. You're gonna apply that evenly across the 1,000 square foot area, and then when you're done, you're gonna irrigate with a quarter inch of water. Now, I'm gonna be doing section five, which is my backyard, there's a lake back there and that's why I'm gonna do this with the pump sprayer and it's actually 2,000 square feet. So in my case, I'm gonna put in a half ounce of concentrate into the two gallon pump sprayer. I'm gonna cover that across the 2,000 square foot evenly and then I'm gonna run my irrigation until it gets down a quarter inch. So the first thing you're gonna do is fill the sprayer up halfway and some of you are gonna ask, can I put in some next products with this? And the answer is yes, you can, but put in your concentrated insect control first agitate and then put your next product on top. I'm gonna to be using a little bit of dethatch. If this added step confuses you, don't worry about it. Don't You don't have to do this. So this is a two gallon sprayer and I need a half ounce. And this convenient tippet pour, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the sun, but it's right there marked one half ounce. So you just squeeze it till you get to that level there and then you pour that in. a little bit more water in now one thing you don't want to do you never want to dip your hose all the way down in there you just don't want to do that it's not a good idea to get product on your nozzle and all that but also there is the chance that it could back up and go into your house water and i know we have backflow preventers and all that but it's just a best practice never dip the business end of your hose into the chemical laden mix a little bit of dethatch i'm not going to measure it i'm just gonna put a little in there just for good measure it's only a couple thousand square feet of how to kill sod webworms or really how to kill insects in the lawn video has been helpful to you. Now I've got more pest control videos coming up because I've got other bugs and other areas to treat and that kind of stuff. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button if you like this kind of content that's all how to using store-bought or Amazon products. And as always, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn.